What does it take to get you in the mood? Maybe like some, it's strawberries and silk. Or maybe, like others, it's a little more nuanced than that. The way that I protected myself, like being a young person navigating New York was just being like, I don't have sex. And then you find somebody that you that actually deserves this part of you, that actually has earned this like part of you, and it's still complicated for me. And yeah. it's frustrating because it's like, I feel like I did everything right. Once we got married, it, I felt overwhelmed mm. by the expectation. It gave me anxiety. Like I was just like sort of disappointed in that reaction from myself and didn't know like what to do with it. I actually felt like he deserved better than that. Like I should be able to do this. So for me, getting in the mood is actually like, it's a hard thing to do. Jonathan Singletary, who side note is married to Elaine Welteroth, and my husband Jared Brady teamed up to make a sexy song devoted to women who do a lot and consequently need a little bit more to get there. And that is what we're talking about on this episode of Lovers and Friends. Lovers and Friends. Hold on a second, let's keep it sexy. We're gonna swap out our theme song this week for this. Just to get you in the mood. love this song so much you can listen to mood by jonathan and jared everywhere that you stream your music but where are my manners hi there lovers hi there friends so let's talk about a topic that gets some people hot and others rightfully kind of bothered sexual arousal aka being horny aka getting in the mood now often this conversation is about what you can do to get there but in this episode we go into first what has to be done or in some people's cases undone for this process to even be possible getting horny seems simple when we think of it through the super bad lens but when we insert real people with real lives we can appreciate this complex process that relies on an interplay of neurological hormonal emotional and physiological cooperation. So beyond the immediate stimulus from our external environment, you know, the silk and the satin, in order to get in the mood, there has to be a seamless feedback loop from the external environment to the brain, to the automatic response of the body, then to the mind, and then to the manual movement of the body, which we can think of from going from being in the mood to making moves, you know, sexual moves at that. Don't worry about nothing. I sent the kids to my mamas. We got a night full of love and I'm taking time with the touch and tonight we ain't got a rush. But back to this loop though. In consideration of this, we can appreciate the fact that if there are hormonal or brain function issues, the loop cannot even begin. If there's no issues there, but there are physical issues with bodily function pertaining to arousal, the loop just stops. And even if the brain and body are down, but the mind isn't because of emotional or social factors, the loop becomes a dead end. And all of these factors combined are what brought me to my big aha from this episode that I actually wanna share right now because it didn't come till the end. And this is our longest interview to date on Lovers and Friends. And when you listen, you'll understand why. When you're preparing a meal, right, we think about mood like that. Like, we're making a sandwich. What do you want to put in it? Oh, this and that. But it's not accounting to the fact that some of us are already coming with, like, a full meatloaf plate. My plate is full, dog. Your plate's full. <laughs> we're trying to add all this stuff onto it to make it sexier. And you're like, it doesn't mesh with the plate that I already have or my plate's already full. Can we clear that off first before we decide to add some extra shit on top of it? Whew. That part. Acknowledging that we have to first address what is on someone's current plate and then consider what needs to be removed in order to then get to a space where we do all the sexy turn on things that we're told about definitely was an aha for me that I would never have gotten to had it not been for the vulnerability, honesty, and just wisdom of both Jonathan and Elaine, who I'm so grateful to not just have as guests in the podcast, but also to have as guests in our home and in our lives as friends. We've been developing a lovely relationship with them, and I hope it continues, especially if Jared and Jonathan continue to make fire music. Now, if you're not familiar with Jonathan and Elaine, you are in for a treat. Jonathan Singletary is a hit recording artist 
and a father who has two new songs out right now called Digital Girl and, of course, Moon, which we're discussing in this episode. He is married to Elaine Welteroth, whom I am extremely familiar and a great admirer of Elaine's work and have been for a long time. Her book, More Than Enough, was a New York Times best seller. In addition, you might know her from Project Runway. You might know her from her days as the editor-in-chief at Teen Vogue. Or you might know her from her brand new series on Hulu that I believe is called The Conversations. But I'm going to fact check that at the end of this conversation. But before we get to this conversation, which it truly is that, this is actually a group date that you get to sit in on as we talk about something that is very sensitive for both Elaine and Jonathan. I'm very grateful that they chose this platform to open up on. Before we get into that beautiful discussion with those human beings that I'm so grateful to know, one which I'm grateful to be married to, I've got to tell you about my hack from Carabanas. The last time that I told you about our sponsor, Ritual and Symbiotic Plus, the supplement specifically created with that weird gut stuff in mind. It was like a week before Carabana, which means I was playing mass and being skin out in the streets. And here is how I looked in my costume. So some of you guys wanted to know, how did I get the abs to pop? Twofold answer, one, hanging leg raises like three times a day. And number two, my daily three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic that supports relief from mild and occasional bloating, <clears throat> gas, and diarrhea. Now what sets Symbiotic Plus apart is the postbiotic. It provides fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and support a healthy gut barrier. And don't worry about refrigeration or carrying around multiple bottles. Symbiotic Plus is an all-in-one single nested mini capsule that is easy to take with you when you travel. I said it before and I'll say it again, Ritual and Symbiotic Plus are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. And that is why Ritual is offering my listeners 20% off during your first month. Visit ritual.com slash lovers to start Ritual. Or if you already have Ritual because you're smart like that, simply add Symbiotic Plus to your existing subscription today. Getting in the mood makes me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Elaine. Hi, Jonathan. What's up? What's up? Hi, Jerry Brady. What's going on? I was like, I'm here too. I don't know. <laughs> Should we take a cleansing breath? Yeah. Or you guys just jump right in and say, what gets you horny for each other? <laughs> no, let's do that activity you taught me. She's trying to kill me. <laughs> Jen is actually trying to kill me on live I just saw Elaine's soul leave her body. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. Okay, literally. Her worst yeah. nightmare, literally. literally. I was like, no, I talked to Shan. <laughs> It's going to be fine. I'm, like, like, I'm just going to let you answer the questions and I'm just going to sit there and look cute. Well, let's talk about the real elephant in the room. We are here because something very incredible has happened. Yeah. Got this single called Mood. It's coming out. You two have a song coming out. With my man, Jared Brady. Yes, yes. Let me take my time. Pour glass, then we let it flow. Don't ask about the plans because I got you, girl. That's all you need to know. Just, just, we gon' get where you need to go I know it's hard for you, baby Letting go makes you crazy Lucky for you, I know what you like Yeah, the following everyone takes patience And baby, girl, I don't mind winning But I done laid out all of your temptations, yeah Just to get you in the mood my favorite game let's make assumptions and i already know the story of the two of you so jared i want you to assume how did elaine and jonathan meet and fall in love well i know i know this story okay what do we think you know okay uh you guys went to the same church right um you shot your shot first of all we went to church as kids together like we met at like 13 years old together yeah. at church and he was sitting in like that back row, you know, like all the boys. Why do all the boys sit in that back row? Yeah. So like when you walk in, you're you like feel their energy and like their eyeballs on the back of your head, and you're <laughs> just like, 
<sighs> you're like so self-conscious to like do anything. He was one of those boys in the back row and they're like whispering, talking, whatever. And I was like the new girl. But I remember seeing Jonathan and always being like, oh my God, he has such a great smile. And then I brought my like New York boyfriend to church one Christmas and Jonathan like made a beeline from the back of the church to the front of the church where we were standing and like meeting people. And Jonathan stood there. Like Jonathan's a really, really nice guy, but like don't sleep on him because like low key, he has game. And it's like, he like stood there talking to me like dead in my eyes, smiling that big smile that he has and like did not acknowledge this man. Like oh. just like didn't acknowledge him. And I was like, this is an interesting situation. I was uh, uh, am I picking up on something? No, I'm not picking up on anything. And then like years later, we were like late 20s, 26 ish, 27 maybe. Jonathan was coming to New York for a job interview and he like Facebook messaged me, which like who who even checks those? Like, but he reached out and he was like, I'm going on an interview. I know I'm gonna be in your city. I'd love to like grab lunch or grab grab a drink. Um, and I'm, you know, if not, like just know I'm really proud of you. I've been like watching your journey. And I was like, all oh, that and he, he signed off best, Jonathan. I was in sales at and the I was time, like, you know what I mean? Best. Yes. <laughs> like, he was best on Facebook. What? But I had just recently gotten out of a breakup and so I was like, or got I had just gotten out of a relationship, so I was like, what else? But I'm not doing anything better. So like, let me meet up with this old friend from church. And then we met up and it was like, it was so much fun instantly. It was like home. It was like, this is my person. It was like, and then I remember sitting there and being like, wait a minute, like, when did he get those shoulders? <laughs> Like, wow. And like the way he sits, like his spread was like, his spread, oh, yeah. this were, man's spread? Yeah, yeah. It's like huge. He's like, <laughs> and so I was kind of like drawn. I was like, wow, I never noticed that. And like his forearms, it was just noticing like little things about him that I was like, he turned into a man. Like, what did this happen? <laughs> and so, and he wasn't giving me energy. And I was so certain. I was like, this is a guy who probably had a crush on me back in the day, like, you know, and then like I show up and he's not giving that energy. So then I was like, you know, that's like kind of also a play. Cause then I was like, well, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm like, maybe he didn't see these clavicles. So. <laughs> and I start like sitting up taller and I'm like giving a little bit of like energy. He's not picking up on it. And he was about to get in his cab and I was like, okay, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm going to DC. And I'm like, oh, what's in DC? And he's like, oh, my girl lives in DC. Ooh. And I was like, oh. like, screw Like what? <laughs> like who? And then in my mind, I was just like, man, I just wasted this whole nice. night. Yeah. Like what? And so then I just kind of put him in the friend zone. I was like, all right, yeah. next. You know what I mean? And then- It sounds like he put you in the friend zone. He, no, I was already in the friend zone. That's the problem. You know what I mean? I thought that there was something going on. But that's how she told herself. Like she, you always tell the story like that. We're like, and then I just kind of put him in the friend zone because I was I like, did. whatever. I did. I'm a girl's girl. Yes, I did. But you're the first one to point it out. It was like, actually, you were. Yeah. Okay, yes. In my mind. Oh, you're you trying to play me? Trying to play me. Yeah. He he had already put me in the friend zone. Little did I know. So then I just like, I met you in the friend zone and just the same. Yeah, thing. yeah. And then it. It kind of flipped where my girlfriend at the time we we broke up and then I moved I moved to New York and I was invited to uh, her mother came to New York and they were cooking. My mom invited him. Right, her mom invited me because Elaine wouldn't invite me because she was like, "We don't invite this dude. He's, yeah. he's got a girlfriend." girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, we hadn't broken up quite yet, but uh, we were on the way out. And when I go to this dinner. Um, it, I don't even know what it was, but seeing Elaine like with her people, with her mom cooking, not on some like male chauvinistic shit, but like, yeah. you know, just like in the kitchen cooking and just like hosting. Yeah. Um, and maybe in part because it was an, it was a side of her I hadn't seen. Like I'd seen she's in pictures as editor yeah, yeah, yeah. and Beyonce and what, whatever. Yeah. And and there was something in me that was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. But after the relationship ended, it was just like to the moon. Popping in on that note to tell you about our sponsor, FabFitFun, because like Jonathan, I also love Elaine's editor slash glam side. And I also love, love that she is also far from being a typical beauty gal. And if you're also done with being typical when it comes to your beauty and lifestyle game, I am here to share a hack. As a FabFitFun member, you get exclusive access to shop 
thousands, let me say it again, thousands of curated products from top lifestyle products and brands like Fenty, Kate Spade, Glossier, and many more for up to 70% off. Is it Glossier or Glossier? I'm never sure. Anyways, these are not sample sizes or the discontinued lines or unsold merch you find at discount stores. These are the best products that they have and you're not gonna find them anywhere else. Their secret to getting this deal, with over 1 million members, FabFitFun helps brand growth by placing massive orders with big promotions and in their boxes, they help these brands to get in touch with a new community of smart, in the know clientele like you and me. And that's also why these top brands offer up early access and exclusive drops. Now, my box introduced me to Alice and Olivia, which I now love. My niece got into Glow Recipe and my mom into Cover FX. Sign up at fabfitfun.com slash lovers, customize your box and get access to discounts again, up to 70% off on the brands you love. And if you're not in love with this season's options, take the credit to shop their exclusive flash sales for up to 70% off and save on the biggest name brands out there. You're welcome. FabFitFun, fabfitfun.com slash lovers. Say it 10 times fast. FabFitFun, FabFitFun, FabFitFun. That's three. We were like magnets that were being pulled together no matter what. It was like, I kept on putting like blocks in front of us like, okay, fine, we can hang out, but only in groups. Or like, okay, fine, we can hang out one-on-one, but but like we're not gonna go to each other's houses. And they're, okay, we can go to each other's houses, but we cannot spend the night. Okay, we can spend the night, but only on the couch. And like, okay, you, like it kept getting like, we just, it was like this gravitational force that was pulling us together. And I think that our purposes are, are intertwined. You know what I mean? So it's deeper. It's, I know it's not the sexy answer, but but when we kissed though, that first kiss was crazy. Cause I, we were, it had been so long and I was like, no, 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 no. I, to this day, have never before or since experienced anything like that. It was like we were on drugs. It was like, it was, it, and, and I thought I was the only one experiencing it. And then when, when we were done and he left, it was like, we were just like <laughs> speechless and like out of breath. And like, he, he like texted me that he, when he got home, he was like, I don't even know how I got home. He's like, I like floated. I don't. I walked home. <laughs> I, I usually would have taken a car, yeah. <clears throat> but I literally felt like I floated from like 145th on in on the west side of like Harlem to my place on what 103rd on the east side of Harlem. It was like yeah. it was strange. It's yeah. strange. It's like it sounds so cheesy right I now. Know. Oh my god, I like hate <laughs> I like hate this for for me right now because it just sounds so cheesy. But what was sexy about Jonathan to me is like he was consistent. Like this man never gave up. Like I was running a half marathon at that time. I remember part of my like pushing him back was that I was finally in a place of like doing me fully. Like I recognized I was in like all of these like mini marriages almost. I was like I was serial monogamous. And I finally was like, no, I'm not doing this. And my life is not going to be about a dude. Like I moved into my own apartment for the first time. I cut my hair off. I uh, decided I was going to run a half marathon. I was doing me, you know? And Jonathan, who at the time I didn't even know had like two ACL surgeries on his knee was like, cool, I'll run with you. <sighs> like, what does it mean to like be by your side while you're in this season? Like, I will do it. That's the actual like, yeah. cheesy story. So I'm just curious about, first of all, it's a beautiful story um, and a hypnotic story and the story that we all want. So I'm very happy that I know people who have it. Um, when all the pauses were coming up where you're like pumping the brakes, yeah. at one point the brakes were because you were partnered. And then once that partner situation went away, you guys didn't just fall into this full force either. No. Was any of that based on religion at all or? No. The only part that would be, I would say less religious, but spiritual was like <clears throat> I had in the two years prior, I had like gone through this thing where I had two DUIs. I was like transitioning from science to music. I just, I had like a existential crisis kind of thing happening where I just looked at why I was doing what I was doing and making, I was trying to make more intentional decisions. And as part of that journey, uh, there was like a reconnection with God that happened where I had not really been going to church. I was, I was just like, and I grew up in the church as you know. Mm -hmm. um, so then at that point, for the first time I, I had made like decisions about my values and my standards as it as it relates to loving people. And there so there was that like spiritual God thing in that. Mm. And 
in so I was honoring that like a, a thing that had nothing really nothing to do with Elaine. It was like I just I want to be loving people better. Mm. So when our relationship started, I was like making sure that my motives were in, in line with that. And mm. uh, so, yeah, that's that's what it was for me. Because I want to ask the question to circle it into the mood conversation, because for Jared and I, we uh, to speak even about the age gap thing. The reason why it wasn't a problem is because I never saw Jared as a romantic prospect at all. Mm. And in many cases, what I was looking got for. It. That's how you got it. That's how you got well, it. Well, at the time that I met Jared, I was, which is a story people are familiar with, but I was about to get deported. I wasn't sure about my status in the country. I was coming out of a long term relationship. Mm -hmm. The last thing I could do was make an emotional tie to somebody else. So I was very aware that I only had the capacity for like a sexual connection. And so I was looking for that. Like mm. I was auditioning dudes for that particular role. But we started out, that was it. Like it was just physical chemistry. So for us, going into the parenthood thing and yeah. song hits really different because it's something that we had to learn to figure out. So I'm just curious from your guys' standpoint where not just sex, but yeah, sex, but that physical chemistry, that getting in the mood where this is romantic, this is sensual. Um, where did you guys start and take me on the journey to where you are today? Okay, so we're going to do like a real version and then we're going to do like a, oh my gosh, what am I going to say on the internet version? Because I don't know how to like edit myself in real life other than just sitting here silent. But what I will, and I don't know why I feel like weirdly emotional today. I feel like I could cry. I don't know why. Really? I don't know why. Um, but for me, talking about sex is very, I don't know, it's very its very uncomfortable for me and it's very complicated. I feel like the religious part is super small, but I do think that plays into it a little bit because I think I was raised in the church where they say like, you know, you don't get married and you don't, you don't have sex until you're married. And I was very confused to find out that like everybody was having sex. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, wait, so like this whole thing that we say, like, is that fake? Like, I'm confused. Like, I thought that was real. So, so, and I think that speaks to just my like naivete growing up around, around sex. And I think my introduction to sex was the idea of it was very, um, defiled and very like it it seemed like scary and I think that I had a lot of fear about it growing up and so the idea of not having sex until you're married felt like the safer thing yes and like the thing I wanted to do but it felt like oh you're not really allowed to do that like not really like no one really does that so then it was sort of like okay how do I protect myself, you know, and not, um, yeah, like you just hear so much about like that that's all guys want and da 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 and so it's like there's no agency for women in sex and when you're young, you know, it just feels like a game where you're going to lose. When I got older, I, I was like, I am not going to have sex with anybody. Like I just, unless it's like deep, like, like to this day, I've never had a, a one night stand. Like I, I don't even know what that's like. I literally don't even know how it could happen. Like there's a part of me that's like so naive. I'm like, how does it happen? Like when you're like, he goes out and like you ask him, does he get hit on? And I'm like, I, like then, so like, how does it happen? Like if somebody <laughs> hits on you and then like, how do you end up just having sex? You, you don't have to, to have sex with them if they hit on you. Right? I, know, <laughs> I know, I know, I right? know. But I'm just saying like, I that's literally how, I, out of like I don't I can't even imagine how that would happen and it, it's it's like the way that I protected myself like being a young person a young woman navigating New York was just being like I don't have sex so that like it's a filter it's like if you really if you're like a good person and you're a re and you really like you just are interested in getting to know me then you will still fuck with me but if if you're not like by me saying that it just like filters out all the bullshit mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean which is actually kind of funny because I remember seeing this guy that that like tried to get my number. He forgot he already got my number. I saw this hey. guy out, <laughs> so he tried to get my number, and then he and then he's like, "Here, put your your phone in my uh, your number in my phone." And I look and I put my number in, and it pops up Elaine in parentheses, no sex. Uh, <laughs> Elaine, Elaine, no sex, which explains why I never heard from him. Which is yeah. how he's asking me again. I already forgot. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's why. So did you forget him too, or you were doing it? I like knew, I knew, yeah. I knew, but I thought it was funny, and then I was like, "Oh, you know what I mean?" Like I yeah. like played him, but. For me, it was like it was like a shield. Yeah, 
uh, for my heart, for my spirit, for my time, for my energy. Like it, I just, it, it was just easier. And then, and then you find somebody that you, that actually deserves this part of you that actually has earned this like part of you and, and is able to sit with you through the baggage of it all and work through that with you. And then even then it's like, sometimes it's, it's still complicated for me. And yeah. it's frustrating because it's like, I feel like I did everything right. I like, you know, I, and now you, even when we got married, I remember like the idea is like you, because we were abstinent for a little while before we got married just to like clear the aura and like kind of reach to try to like redo the, oh, yeah, yeah. the commitment to waiting for marriage. And then. Is that interpretation you had sex before marriage and then stopped? Yeah. And then waited into marriage? Yeah. Once we got married, it, I felt overwhelmed mm. by the expectation. It gave me anxiety. Like I was just like sort of disappointed in that reaction from myself and didn't know like what to do with it. I actually felt like he deserved better than that. Like I should be able to do this. For me, getting in the mood is actually like, it's a hard thing to do for me sometimes. And it's like hard to get out of my head. It's hard to separate sex from all the mm -hmm all the things about sex that I have seen, witnessed, experienced, like that just feel like the opposite of like light and fun. Yes. So it's like, how do I access that part of me that can experience it the way he could experience it? When I talk about it, like, oh, I'm such a prude and stuff, it's easier to say that, but this is like the real. It's connected to a lot of history. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I and oddly, weird ways I relate. I grew up very religious um, and sex to me was when I actually did it, I can relate to that feeling of like, wait, that was, <laughs> that was what it was. And, but I lost it really early in my childhood. And I remember sitting on my bunk bed that can explain how old <laughs> I was. <laughs> I remember sitting on my bunk bed, like, so wait, that was that was it, and I was I was in a household that was very very religious, and I remember thinking, well, I'm going to hell now, <laughs> so I'm gonna just go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and my relationship with sex um, was like it transpired in a lot of different areas, and it went into my early twenties, and um, the whole environment was like this is something that I keep secret. This is something that is like a weird encounter thing that I have, and I think. Me being a male, it was easier as I got older to deal with it because I was like, well, this is just, I'm a man, so this is normal feelings. But I couldn't only imagine what it was like to experience the shame and all the things that went with sex as a woman because you're like, I'm not supposed to be feeling this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I remember it took me having to shed from uh, Christianity completely to deal with my desires when it came mm. to sex. Um, and I could, you know, I could understand like, you know, being in a marriage and being like, well, this is actually where I'm permitted to do this, but it still feels weird because you had, I don't know how many years until you guys got married, you had X amount of years to feel this when it was connected to sex. Mm -hmm. um, and nowadays, do you guys feel like that? Is that why that song like hit so differently? because of all the history what comes with it on the surface it's just like i'm gonna get you in the mood but then it's like hearing that from him is it like please just <laughs> take me there yeah are you I, i'm That's like so i feel like he's asking you but <laughs> I know first like, of all it's just a bop like i, yeah. I like the song like it's just such a good song and by the way your part i'm gonna eat a full plate I'm oh like, <laughs> yes i feel like everyone's gonna go crazy for that part that's my favorite part of the song but I, he I really think does. I, he really does. <laughs> yeah, he really does. He really does be down there for quite some time. Oh, okay. oh my God. Okay. Good One for of you. the elephants just got <laughs> loose. All right. No, but it's just like a really sexy, fun song that is just like a vibe. And I love it so much. And, and I do think it like helps someone like me who's sort of so locked up in my head, like access this like playful, sexy side and like, 
you know, I, and I and I, it's also very different for him to put out a song like this. Like this is not his songs are usually like very like emotional or like yeah. very piano yeah. prayer and piano and yeah piano and prayer. Yeah. You know, so like for him, it's also a departure. And I was like, oh. <laughs> okay, husband. <laughs> let me find out. Like you know, so I think we're and we're also like in a lighter, fun part of our mm. relationship now as it relates to this. If anything, it's more just like we're tired. <laughs> we're like really tired. I'm tired. <sighs> For me, it's it's like not the things that society tells you um, that would turn you on that actually turn me on. Especially at this stage of our relationship, it's not like. Chocolate covered strawberries and jazz music and mm-hmm. candle lit dinners. Although, like, that's cool. I will take it. You know what <laughs> I mean? I do like to eat. But for me, it's more like like seeing him be like the man of the house. Like seeing mm. him even like like installing floodlights in front of on our on our porch so that we're safe. So if somebody walks up and it just like I like thought that was so hot. Like <laughs> the other day, like we there was like a guy who came to our door and I was like, it was scary. He was like bet like shut it down like went to home depot got the floodlights now it's like automatic if somebody pulls up like there aren't we have cameras everywhere and i was just like it's things like that that make me feel like so drawn to him or like seeing him take care of our family seeing him take care of people that i love like it's those things and that's so i'm like i'm so old like (laughs) damn when did i get old like this but ultimately i think it's just talking it's like for like when he and I connect and just in an undistracted, undivided way, like our attention is on each other and we're able to just like feel like there's no time constraints and we just can really talk and I can unload whatever it is I'm carrying and then I feel lighter and I can feel myself. Like it's hard for me and I wonder how many people feel this way too. Like it's it's hard to be like a hard charging woman in this world who has a lot on their plate, a lot to accomplish, to go from your head to your body. Mm. That for me is the sexiest thing, is Mm -hmm. just having like deep, long conversations, laughing together. Like that's that's what gets me in the mood if I have to freaking say that (laughs) on the internet, oh my God. But for me, this song is like, it is a song, it's a bop, it's a vibe, it's like a feeling, but I also recognize, I was thinking about it today, I was like, it's kind of like aspirational in a sense too, where it's like, because it simplifies it in in a way. Like we, I think we both touch on some really real points in there. Like Jared, your, your first line is like, let me open up your mind. Oh yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like, that's kind of the whole thing. And I have a line, something like to find a real one takes patience and baby, baby girl, I don't mind waiting, but I didn't lay down all of your temptations. So it's like, I did, I can do what I can do. But I know that it takes patience to like, it's taken patience for us to get to this point. And on the macro level, on the micro, it also could take, it's also going to take patience tonight, today, or this week, or maybe this month, <laughs> or whatever. Because um, I think there's a wide spectrum uh, of what's considered like normal for like how long it takes or what it takes to get somebody in the mood. And for like how often somebody's in the mood and all, all of these things. And, and we are... We're only really given like one image of what that what that's supposed to look like. It's like, all right, you're going on a date. So somebody's gonna get the other person in the mood and then sex is gonna happen. Like yeah. and, and if you if it doesn't happen, then usually the guy, like, you messed up. You didn't you missed yeah. this, you didn't do this right, you should have hit her with this and yeah. did the, like pulled this <laughs> yeah. trick. And but in reality, it's there are a lot of things that I could do. There's a lot that I'm learning in terms of what what to do and it's really and there are a lot of like revelations and epiphanies that have happened through the journey of our relationship in particular like uh over the last was that last year year and a half year and a half where um we were just kind of dealing with stuff some the trauma stuff had come up and and i i had a kind of epiphany that like intimacy is the better goal like that's the more important goal Mm -hmm. like even if you are physical with somebody like you're you're going to be capped based on how intimate you actually are like mm-hmm. and how where you are with your intimacy for at least in in my opinion and I think in our relationship so I'm like how do we maximize intimacy and a lot of that is through conversation and connection and uh just feeling like we're actually together like spiritually emotionally all of that so that if so the physical becomes a part of that intimacy that takes it to another level but it's not 
the end. It's mm -hmm. it's a part of a larger um, a larger pursuit of of connection. Pardon the interruption, but truly, I cannot think of a better sponsor for this episode than Dipsy. So I want you to picture this: you just put the kids to sleep, or you just finished a long day of work, but you also know that you still have to clean the kitchen, meal prep for the next day, and shower. And you also know in the back of your mind that you'd like to get frisky tonight, but if you're honest, your body is just not on that wave. So. You pop in your headphones, you get to cleaning, and you turn on a story from Dipsy to get you going. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women for women. Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. And now you can listen to spicy audios by some of your favorite TikTok creators. Plus, Dipsy has sleuthing, sleuthing. Dipsy has soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and sexy stories you can read. The scenario that I painted above is from my real life, and it can be yours too for free. Yes, for listeners of Lovers and Friends Only, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash lovers. That is 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash lovers. <laughs> The bee was on my foot. He was on it. I feel violated. Yes. Thank you for coming to save me. Don't stop. Don't stop responding to those irrational screams. It's interesting in listening to you how I'm reminded that for women especially, but I think all people are just expected to be able to meet a role with nothing but excitement, anticipation, and readiness and preparedness. And I feel that in hearing your story about motherhood, where I was able to meet Jared as a sexual person or somebody who was ready to have sex and open to the relationship that we have that I've never had with anybody else. But I had spent a decade prior dismantling Catholicism and my experiences and negative experiences as an adult who was trying to figure out their sexual self. And um, so when I got to the Jared stage, I had worked so aggressively on all of the other parts so that I was able to meet this relationship and the dynamic that we had with that kind of enthusiasm. Mm. I think as a mom though, that was something that I was like, I'm just figuring out as I go along. Mm. And I look at you as somebody who's like, really did the work intentionally beforehand to see the skills necessary to meet motherhood head on. Mm. Like your organization, your preparedness, your resourcefulness, your ability to curate a community, your ability to ask for help, to know where to look for help. And I watch you and I'm like, fuck, I don't have any of these skills, right? And I'm trying to catch up afterwards. And so it just reminds me of that feeling of that. It's just it's a lot of more work than we take into account, you know, and getting in the mood can be something that's simple for somebody who hasn't had the past that you've had, hasn't had the conditioning, or has had the space and time or encouragement to work through those things to enter a relationship with a blank slate. Um, I think that that's something really beautiful to reflect on. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And also, we are taking it as it comes to. I think we got extremely lucky with like very supportive grandparents who are in the same state, and we have you know childcare, which. Shout out to Jonathan because you're the one who found her and she's changed our lives. And that type of stuff is sexy. Like he found he found the babysitter, you know, yeah. and she worked out and he manages her hours. That's sexy. Like he he takes such an active part in parenting that it takes such a big load off for me that I, I can't even say that it's the baby that's made our dynamic, you know, that that makes it hard to get in the mood or that that makes it hard for us to reconnect. Um, I will say, though, the the physical toll of carrying a child and delivering a child is something that we don't talk about enough. And like the idea of they're like, oh, six weeks after I'm like, <laughs> like, <laughs> what? No way. Don't even look at me six weeks after. You know what I mean? Like it felt like it felt like your body has undergone this like complete reconfiguring from the inside and it takes time to even feel comfortable in your body again let alone sharing your body with someone else so I'm curious what your journey was after having because you've done it twice now like 
We fucked really quickly afterwards. You did? Really quick. How, girl? I just wanted it. You did? I just, you know what it was? I hated pregnancy so much. And I've just been honored about where I'm at sex drive wise. During pregnancy, I had no sex drive at all. I just didn't really feel, and I didn't have an interest in even trying. So afterwards, when I felt like it was me and I was a solo occupant of my body, I just wanted to share that in that sensual way with my partner and my pregnancy journey allowed for that. So I think it's just those different stories. Some people I know, they're pregnant. They feel the sexiest ever and the most sensual and the most in the mood. That just wasn't my... I did. Yeah. And that some people actually said they have had more sex during pregnancy than they did afterwards because, of course, you have to now account for the schedule of the baby in it. But, yeah, that um, that was... I don't know. Did we? What do you remember? Yeah. It different. We did. We did really quickly after, like like concerningly quickly. <laughs> like, like I remember just being like, "Are we? It's good." Concerningly quick was Jerry got a vasectomy, and that day, oh yeah, yeah, was on me, and I was just like, "This is not doctor recommended for damn sure." I thought that I was going to be getting the full service, eat the plate, eat the full plate. Right, right, right. End of story. No, no, no. It was it was mutual, and I was very shocked by that. So maybe we just have a weird. <laughs> kink for pain and questionably <laughs> <laughs> i love that for you guys I wait so how, i'm curious can you t when you say what do you think it means when people say i'm a really sexual person when you're especially for women i get it for guys i get it <laughs> i think you but, just know i mean haven't you what does you, that mean it you it pours out of you you wake up in the morning and you think about it you're just throbbing all day long and I've gone through those phases like we just got back together after six weeks and during that six weeks, six, six, six weeks apart it like barely occurred to me to even acknowledge that I had a vulva other than to shower it but as soon as he got back it was like this constant thought on my mind and it's not that way anymore now you know it's been a week and so then that it, it's a bit more manual like yesterday he told me to shower and I was like oh I know what that means I was like all right um so there's but there you know a week ago would have been like I'm already showered I'm already shaved let's go do this I think that you just know but again for me there's not um not a lot of mental baggage it's, it's a body question mm. body do you want this body are you interested um Jared's body are you interested I think that we've been fortunate to meet each other both at a place where mentally the answer was yes and our foundation for our relationship is sexual chemistry. Mm. Yeah. So, and I think too, it's like, even if like I'm not all the way into it, or and you can answer this too, if Shan's not all the way ready in the mood, I know that after it's done or ten minutes in, I'm like in the mood. I'm I'm ready, or I never regret. Like I never like threw like, man, I wish we didn't have sex. You right, know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was always like. Uh, at the end of it, I was like, I'm happy that that happened. And we got to connect in that way. Even if at the beginning, like, Shan was more horny than I was. And she came on to me. Um, and I could have went to sleep easily that night, you know. And so I just know that you're never, like, I never was. I had to tell myself that even when we're in the process of she's, like, coming on to me. And I'm like, oh, I really could just go to sleep right now. Um, I had to tell myself, like, yeah, but you'll get into it and pretty soon. Um, not pep talking yourself into <laughs> in your way. Come act, on, you can do this. Don't act like you don't relate. <laughs> Ten minutes from now, it'll be over. <laughs> don't, just close your eyes. Don't act like you don't relate. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jonathan's like, what is that like? <laughs> what? Turning it away? Never. Jonathan's always letting me know, like, you could wake me up. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. No. That's my, I, I actually don't like that at all. No, yeah, <laughs> Different uh, turn-ons, though. But Jared's turn-on yeah. that I have acknowledged and learned is he's very environmental. He's very time and place. And um, he is very, like, conscious of who's around, who can see, who can hear, what will they think, is the dishes loaded, is this, that. And so I've had to kind of get onto that time for him of acknowledging that it's just not – like throwing it at him all the time, it ends up being a turn off. Whereas mm. for me, like the constant um, on you-ness, even if we don't engage in it, for me is like just putting money in the piggy bank. Mm -hmm. I hope that this conversation, and, and for me it's doing it, it's like just creates more room for people to be like, oh, I'm not weird because I really, really want it or I'm not weird because I really, really don't all the time or because when I got married, I didn't immediately like everything that happened before my marriage chain didn't change and all of a sudden i'm like anytime any place anywhere it's like that that would be strange and i feel like for me it's a difference between like religious thinking and like spiritual thinking it's like religious to me is rules it's like when this happens and this happens and it, and it doesn't really take into account your your truth and like mm -hmm. who you are as an individual and what you bring into 
any given moment, uh, despite titles or expectations. And so with all of that said, one of the questions I keep thinking about is like, how do you find out about, and this is even like before the questions about like, what do you like in sex? It's like, how do you find out what are questions you can ask to figure out what your partner, what does get your partner in the mood? Or how did you guys discover that about each other? Was it really intentional? Well, I mean, to answer your question first, Shan is like a very, very talkative person, especially mm. when it comes to sex and intimacy. Like after on, I might as well have a survey handed to me. <laughs> being like, okay, so how did you like this new thing? What about this toy? All right, what about this one? Okay, cool. You like this? You don't like that? You don't like... Like she takes... Sur- like she really is interested in the topic itself. Mm-hmm. So naturally, she's very interested in me. Almost to like to the point where I'm like, ah, do we have to talk about it? Like yeah. it takes... A, like I don't know. Let's just let it flow. But I think that <laughs> part of it is why I think she understands me sexually so much. Um, and then to answer your question, I think for... For me, it was like time and space, like with Shan, comfortability, getting to know certain parts of myself with Shan um, that, you know, allowed me to just dive into what I actually like, what my preferred way of interacting in this way would be. Um, But before it was kind of like, I, I, as a dude, would learn from porn or I would learn from messaging from older uh, uh, adults or older people. And so that was like fed to me as a kid of like, this is the way men like things. This is the way you see people having sex do it. And this is the way that I must like it. You know what I mean? So it just took a long time of, of being with the right person to kind of dive into it. And then also entering a space with Shan, I came into it already acknowledging that she has been studying this area for so much longer than me. I'm coming in more of like, what is it? Let's figure it out (laughs) together, you know, instead of being like, I should, which a lot of my sexual encounters were like, you're the dude who lead this area, you go. You know what I mean? But when I came in with Shan, she was older. She studied sex and relationships. So there was already a a, a, a apprentice and, you know, the master (laughs) relationship when it came to that area. Yeah. Yeah, which I don't think would lasted very long. What do you um, mean? Well, I mean, also truth be told, I've been in LA for almost 10 years. Jared is the only person I've had sex with in the city. Really? Yeah. So when I started having sex with Jared is because I hadn't had anybody here and I wanted to pl- apply a lot of the things that I had learned. And so I was auditioning people. Like and I was just making out with dudes and seeing if the that moment that you guys had, that Disney moment... I didn't have that for the kiss. I had that when he fingered me. But I that moment That's that so you're cute. like something, oh, wow. <laughs> so something that. here is special and different about this, right? <laughs> so when I experienced that with him, I'm like, okay, this is the person that I want to start <laughs> playing in this space with. And we just ended up, you know, playing to the altar and, and two kids later. But wow. Yeah, I think that I was knowledgeable in terms of structured knowledge, but I didn't know how to apply that or what that looked like. And so I've been you're my greatest teacher as well Mm. so it's been wonderful in that way Mm. but I think what I really love what you guys said that makes this conversation so much more approachable is that mood right in my horny forever 16 year old brain I'm like it's fucking and it's not right because mood is just transferring from parents to intimate partners Mm -hmm. it's going from Mm -hmm. being guarded all day and having to constantly look over your own shoulder and be mindful of your own triggers to being with someone that you could just breathe and live with like that safe space, mm-hmm. a person who puts the floodlights up for you. So it's not necessarily having to go from this to that. It's like this to this. Yes. And that, I think, if you're more focused on that, like Jonathan said, then that sex part either does or doesn't happen, mm-hmm. doesn't change the fact you could still have like an incredibly connected time together. I think that we had to learn that because by nature of starting out as sexual partners, that was like every time we saw each other. And then when we moved in together, I felt the need to keep that up. So for like the first year we lived together, we had sex every single day. And, you know, imagine that's your life. And then now you go to sometimes it's two weeks, right? Like that can feel like a failure if you're only interpreting intimacy as sex. Mm. Yes, mm. 100%. I'm curious how having kids has changed your guys' dynamic 
And it the, took time to adjust to, for sure. I know, especially for me, as Shan said, like, I'm very in tune with the environment. One of my greatest fears is, like, where are you walking in or <laughs> something like that. Like, that, like, it's, like, one of the things I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so... I am like a, a, acutely attuned to that. And we have a lot of people in the space all the time. And so it's like something that took time to adjust. And then it kind of felt unsexy to be like, well, at five o'clock, we're going to be free at this time. Both <laughs> of them are going to be down. They're going to this or this. So it just kind of started to, um, it took time. And I think now, three years later almost, I feel like we've kind of adjusted to like, okay, this is the time period where we most likely will be having sex. And so, all right, cool. Now I can be spontaneous in this area, mm. right? Which made it a little bit more um, doable now. And as they get older, they starting to sleep through the night. It makes it a lot easier. Um, whereas before, it would be like we'd be working and we'd be both be home and we're, we're it's only us working on the stuff. So she would like come in and be like, do you want to have sex? You know what I mean? So there was a lot more spontaneity on the, on the nose um, type of sex that we had. But now i think that we have adjusted adjusted a little bit more no, to yeah. have after kids. kid one it was pretty rough yeah i think it was pretty rough yeah. um up until i think having the second kid transformed things for us and we had so many amazing hard conversations the first year which is why sometimes the news like even when that you know kiki palmer thing came out with mm -hmm. the drama she's experiencing i was like y'all just please hold on like it's been four months three yeah. months like it sucks right now and there's so many emotions and expectations and feelings and fears and insecurities like just ride this wave because it's fucking rough yeah. and to do it mm -hmm. holding on to somebody even though you're afraid they're going to pull you under you're going to come out on the other side and then figure it out that just would be my strongest advice because yeah i've never thought about divorce so heavily as i did in the first you know year after having a kid and when I zoom out and look at it, it really didn't have anything to do with our dynamic. It's had to do with us changing as people and changing our lives so much. Hmm. So for you guys who are you know now post a year, how did it net out for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have like our chemistry, it's palpable and it's powerful and it's it's special. And like I I know that at all times, like it's just a matter of like what's going on in the day in the season in you know post post baby and all of that there are like things to figure out but i don't question our our like connection and ke chemistry and and any of that i would be frustrated at times i was never really like upset but i did there was a latent like i was like oh man like how do i figure this out i was frustrated with myself etc 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 but when i sh when the focus shifted and i was like well how do i prioritize intimacy that was kind of like an exciting thing that kind of threw the, the the thinking about sex. It opened this whole this new thing up in our relationship where I was like intimacy as a focus. It seems kind of elementary and kind of basic in some ways. We'd been together for seven and a half, eight years at that point. But now it's like, oh, this is a new thing in our relationship. So that's that's been fun. Um, and it felt like an elephant left the room. Yeah, yeah. It felt yeah. like, <laughs> I'm just going to keep on plugging. You know what I mean? Just looking out. Just looking out. Um, I mean, are we going to talk about the fact that you have pink elephants on your head? I mean, yeah. is everyone going to say it? But anyway. It's, uh, it's a set of met Lo let them uh, talk in the comments. Got to oh, give them something. Oh, that's smart that it's pink. Yeah. Is this pink, right? The pink yeah. elephant yeah. in the room? Yeah. I don't think um, it's pink elephant. Yeah. <laughs> is it not? Maybe in Canada. I don't. Okay, maybe. <laughs> yes, maybe in Toronto. There's a club called Pink Elephant. But anyway, it definitely felt like when he had that, when he had that epiphany, it felt like literally like a pink elephant just left the room and we could just be. Like it felt like expectation left the the space. And for both of us, too. For like, both of us. I, it's like it's weird that an epiphany can make you be like, it's like, oh, it is like, so you look at the person that was like, I need, this thing is supposed to happen. This thing is supposed to happen. And you can be like, no, chill out, bro. The next level of that is connected to something bigger, which is like, which is the connection. Like, yeah. Use it to amplify and go deeper into that connection. I mean, it's a testament to you, you know, uh, your, your maturity and then your love for Elaine, because I know a lot of men who don't have that emotional maturity to understand that it has, that it's, it's not a reflection because I know a lot of people would go into themselves. Yeah, it's a reflection of me. There's a reason why am I doing something wrong? Am I am I the re am I the reason why this is not panning out the way that I thought it would? Um, and that you landed on something so healthy as just like, well, let me just focus on intimacy because that's what I actually want. You know what I mean? Hopefully, the byproduct of that is everything else. But 
this is what I actually want, and this is what I'm trying to search for. What I thought I was trying to get through having sex. Yeah. Um, that part. Which is cool. Yeah. That part. I mean, yeah, and and I appreciate you saying that. And also, like, for a long time, I did a lot of that, where I was mm -hmm. like, I, what am I doing wrong? What is wrong with me? Um, like, like physically, why, you know, am I not doing enough as, as, a, as a partner? So many other things about, like, your identity as a man can, can play out in sex and and around sex and mm -hmm. so i definitely was like i think that was part of the frustration where i was i was taking it on as like it must be it must mean something's wrong with me mm -hmm. and um and i think we get like that when, when you're self-centered it, it doesn't just mean you're like selfish selfish and whatnot it means that you like you could start negative looking at yourself through a negative lens because you're forgetting that there are other people or another person yeah involved in that very situation when when like i actually empathize with her i was able to like take that pressure off of myself just to underline the the expectation piece like who for a working mom there are so many expectations on you throughout the day mm -hmm. and then so many expectations that you place on yourself at the end of the day the last thing you want to feel when you climb into bed is more expectation mm -hmm. you know you just like so when i f when i feel that expectation i'm like oh my god uh, you know i'm like but then it's weird because as soon as that expectation energy leaves the room then all of a sudden you feel lighter and you lean in and i'm just i when i feel lighter and more playful like that's a better space for us you know what i mean at, at the end of the day to really connect and to feel in to, to feel that sense of intimacy and like i'm also kind of like what do you why would anyone want someone who who's only like doing it for you because you're placing that expectation on them like yes. that should never be the the nature through which by which we're connecting with each other on this level you know so um i don't know i think it's a blessing and a curse to think about physical intimacy in such a precious, like sacred way, um, because it sort of feels like it can only, like you only want to access it when you're like complete, like nothing's on your mind and you're like totally light and like the baby's like, you know, good and every, like it's like the full checklist is checked off. Now you can experience that level, you know? Mm. I So I think I'm I'm still on that journey to be honest and I think you know, hopefully I'm not an alien and I'm the only one in the world who's like that. But I think like not at all, e not at all. There are no, not at all. You have to know that. Not at all. I mean, I hope so. Maybe because you don't say it out loud enough. But your story is so many people's stories. Some people are so grateful to hear this story and to hear a different perspective. Uh, growing up Christian, religious, all, all of that as well. It's like, yeah, you, you are taught that it's mm -hmm. sacred in a in a very specific way. And. I agree with taking it off of this like pedestal, um, which I think the intimacy re um, epiphany relates to because it's just it's just a part of something larger, and and it's it's a beautiful thing, and it can be playful, it can be fun, um, but great sex does not necessarily signify a great relationship, and bad sex does not necessarily signify a bad relationship. It can it can relate to some other things that are going on, but that's but but I so in that way yeah I, I feel that taking the ped, taking it off the pedestal and just shifting priorities uh, and and I also because I recognize this is somewhat related but in that uh, intimacy thing I re, I was thinking about where I was in my life and what things what I wanted mm -hmm. not only in this relationship but outside of the relationship what I wanted to fulfill that I think I was kind of like hoping sex would give me. Mm -hmm. Um, what I would sex or masturbation, whatever it might have been, it's like I need this so badly because I haven't like fulfilled X, Y, and Z. You're feeling unsatisfied with something that you're not giving yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not giving yourself time. You're not yeah. giving yourself like you're not prioritizing yourself in this way, and and your your passion and your desire maybe for music in this way. So once I started doing that, even more around that same time, my like need my like oh like but why isn't it happening like that started to dissipate yeah i wouldn't i wasn't even able to 
enjoy sex with a person that I'm in a relationship with because I would feel guilty after the sex. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, that that I deal with that. Be- I dealt with that way before I met Shan, but I remember being in relationships and being like, "We're not supposed to do this," or you know that those type of conversations For sure. where you're just like, "Oh no, like I'm." disobeying god and mm-hmm. i am going to burn for eternity and, and it was it just yeah it was a lot it was a lot <laughs> I, I put a lot of pressure on sex um and then i had all these de- desires that yeah. i was like in a relationship and couldn't hold you know i couldn't hold it together you mm-hmm. know so how, how did both of you guys do that work like what what did that work look like because even you said that you had to kind of disassociate with like your Catholic mm-hmm. context for sex in order to get to a place where you could really be free with Jared. And then you're talking about your religious experience kind of being mm. a hindrance for your ability to be sexual. Like, but you guys said you both individually did your work before meeting each other. Like, what did that work consist of? Oh, I just got beat down by life. I had to go through so much crap and um, I got hurt a lot by the church, like Mm. deeply hurt. Um, And so I think that was the start and the journey. And then coming to a realization that like, there's nothing, and this is, I know this is a completely, I don't want to like go on a religious tangent, but like there was nothing, I had to really understand and trust that there was nothing that I could do that would separate me from God. And once I understood that, it gave me a better relationship with sex. In a weird way. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Jared was, when I first met him, was all he talked about was religion. And he was researching constantly and just trying to understand and really gain a perspective on the perspectives that were shaping his life and his attitudes. Mm. I think I went through something very similar in my own way of just researching and reading and asking questions and watching podcasts, watching videos. This probably predates podcasts. But I think when I'm having this conversation, I'm thinking about it. It's like when you're preparing a meal, right? We think about mood like that, like... We're making a sandwich. What do you want to put in it? Oh, candles and this and that. But it's not accounting to the fact that some of us are already coming with like a full meatloaf plate. And so like putting- My put, plate is full, dog. Your plate's <laughs> full, right? And so then when you're trying to add pickles and some stuff candles off my plate, and actually. Chop, that's really it, yeah. right? We're trying to add all this stuff onto it to make it sexier. And you're like, it doesn't mesh with the plate that I already have or my plate's already full. Can we clear that off first before we decide to add some extra shit on top of it? Whew. That part. So I think that that was, you know, a fortunate thing about we was the reason why we were compatible sexually um, is because we had both put the time into to clear our plates in that specific, very, very specific area. area. It was small. Mm. Yeah. We weren't connecting on this grandiose like way. And there were tons of other areas that our plates were very full. So I just wanted to iterate that to say like, we just never look at couples like on a hierarchy of like yeah. who's done this and who's mm-hmm. in a better position and who's met each other at the right moments because there's just a million different ways to be compatible. Mm. This is one of them, which is why circling back, I love the flip on this song from getting you in the mood, you know, to be physical, but just getting you in the mood to feel safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happens next? Like that's the dot, dot, dot. That's almost way less important and in many ways way less sexy. Mm. True. You know how to end a poke. If I could just ask you, she said, yeah. I was trying to put, I'm going to put a period on this. <laughs> Would you have a podcast or something? Right. <laughs> and I, a rumor has it you guys have a song out. So tell the people. Go listen. It's out right now. You can either go to my bio or, or Jonathan's bio. It's in, yeah. the, it's in the bio of this video right now. I'm going to let you take it away. I don't want to take your spot. So. <laughs> oh, all good. Mood, mood is out everywhere. Go listen. Go vibe. Put it on. See if it works. Hopefully it works for you. I think, I think it will. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good it's such a good song. I personally feel like I'm his cookie lion. And when he comes out with a good song, I just, I literally could be standing on the corner just like telling everybody, go to li- li- with my fur coat on, <laughs> go listen to the song. Bravo to my three incredible guests on this episode. We really have to do an update on the friendship topic. And I asked Elaine if she would be my guest of honor for that, not just as somebody that I consider to have the F word towards, um, but also somebody who I think is extremely talented at curating very mindful, intentional, ethical, just additive relationships. It's a very like robotic way of describing friendships, but y'all know how I am. Speaking of robotic, I had to go back and fact check and I was wrong. 
The Hulu show that Elaine is hosting that just dropped is called The Conversations Project. I cannot wait to listen. The guests are fascinating. She is fascinating. The lighting is beautiful. The dinner looks delicious. It's all the things that I enjoy. And it's uh, it's a mood maker. And speaking of which, please uh, do yourself a favor and do Jared and Jonathan a favor and go and stream Mood right now. You can also stream Jonathan's other new song that is a big bop. It's called Digital Girl, depending on what your vibe is. If you're moving into like cuffing season energy or still in summer vibes, there is something for everybody. He also has something that's called Piano and Prayer or Prayer and Piano because now my brain's like just second guessing everything that I say. Um, so follow him on Instagram to keep up to date with all of the work this incredible duo is doing. Just, yeah, big love and big shout outs to you. Also, big love and shout outs to all of you who have stayed till the end of this episode. It was a longer one. Did you enjoy long interviews like this or do you hate it and me and everything? And if so, I got something for you to do next. Go and complain about me. Go and bash me and do it somewhere that makes a big impact on the rate and review section. Yes, tell the world from now until eternity how you really feel about lovers and friends and Shamboodram. Truly. I said this before, I'll say it again. Going to the rate and review section makes a very big difference for podcasts. And truth be told, whether you say something good or you say something bad, the effort is still acknowledged because it's really just about showing the world that people care enough to engage. So if you do care enough, I mean, I'd rather you not say something mean. Like, don't like try to think of something mean just because I said so. Um, if you really do have the time and you do care, please go and do that. Yeah. We've talked about this many times before, my inability to end these episodes. And it, it doesn't get any better week to week. We'll try again next week, though. That's what podcasts are for. Love you all. Have a great one. Thank you for listening. Lovers and Friends is executive produced by Shared Entertainment's Shamboodram, that's me, with production support from Two West Entertainment's Adam Krasner and Brianna Barone. The Lovers and Friends theme song is produced by Sean Ross and Shared Entertainment's Jared Brady, who also does the scoring, sound design, and mastering. Lastly, this podcast is powered by Audioboom, who gets us in contact with our incredible sponsors, who the show would not be possible without. You can find the exclusive discounts and links mentioned in this episode right in the show notes or in the info box. Take care. Bye, lovers. Bye, friends.